Okay, I'd like to uh, call the meeting to order. Today is uh, Tuesday, April 22nd, 2014. This is a special board of education meeting. Um, there is no need for a uh, executive session. May I uh, have the Pledge of Allegiance, please? <coughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. There are no um, <clears throat> agenda modifications, and so we will have, we will start off with uh, a board discussion. Oh, adoption. Sorry, it's not on here. It's under there. Oh, okay. May I have a motion to adopt the agenda for tonight? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? All those? Thank you very much. Now, we will have a brief discussion on the Taylor Manufacturing Pilot discussion. You all should have a, a sheet. It basically is the resolution, um, which we'll read on Thursday, so I don't think we need to read the whole thing. Are there any, first of all, is there any, have anybody a chance to read that and have any questions on the? Uh, yeah, well, can you explain this? Let's see now, I get the first part. That's the easy part. Uh, mm -hmm. Six to 10, explain how that works. I want to just make sure I understand um, what happens here. Because we talk about phase out abatement exemption. So the abatement, in other words, um, based on the final assessed valuation to be set on July 1 of 2020. Right. So in other words, there will be, in other words, you won't know what the assessment is until 2020, correct? Well, the assessment oh, okay. I get may it. or may not go up, right. but okay. we are going right. to base okay. the first five I, years. Okay, so then, on, so the first five years right. are at, at one point four or five million dollars. Right. So then, at year six, which will be twenty twenty, right, should it be an assessed uh, a, a, the assessed value may or may not change, but right. it'll be locked in at whatever it is on July first, twenty twenty, and then so when you go to year six, you're they. they 80% abatement, so that means what? The, it's 20% will be added to the, in other words, and if it's okay. the, I suppose just an example goes to $2 million. <clears throat> okay. All right. The difference between 1.45 and 2 million. Actually make sure, make, make the assessment 2.45 million and make it an even million, <laughs> just so it's oh, easy okay. to do the head, the head. Then okay. 20% of that will. $200,000. Will be. Uh, Added to the 1.45. Okay, and then so on as okay. the, as the years go. So then, when you get down to year 10, then it is at it's whatever the oh, right, it's right, full right, assessment. Right. And then after that, now so the assessment after can't change. So done. once it once it's final assessed on July 1st, 2020. Well, of course, would it ever change? I guess only if the town reassessed. Otherwise, it sits where it is forever, unless the town well, reassessed. Unless the owner. Or the owner sold. The, well, or, or grieved. Or grieves right. and causes it to go down. Right. Well, actually, that's not true. The, uh, the, town, the town of Poughkeepsie is 100%, and they, they, they recycle that on a, a five year basis, I think, something like that. Recycle what? The, the, re, the assessments. It, it has to, they're 100% assessed. Yeah. And that, that they have to maintain that. So they have to. They have to keep. Oh, so in other words, in 2020, by 2025, they, whatever, they, whatever would, it is. they might yeah. do it again. Yes. yes. Okay. Well, money. That's that's their option. Yeah. They yeah. may not. Right. Right. But they could. I'm just saying. Yeah. So the the, the point is, the property has already been reassessed to 1.45. That's what we're going to get anyway. It doesn't matter, right? Whether they're there or matter. not. That's what it's whether assessed it goes, at, right? It's, it's, if it doesn't get filled in, the, the assessment's going to only go down, right? not up. So um, this is a win for the town of Poughkeepsie. Uh, I think it's a win for the school district. It, it fills that building. Um, um, I think, as Kevin, you and I discussed uh, the other day, the only thing we don't understand is why the city of Poughkeepsie would want to lose it, 
Yeah, yeah I'm a little curious about that too, but and it's, it's, that's property, it's not really my problem. That, that's, but, that's their yeah, problem. Right. <clears throat> So I guess I've missed part of the discussion. How is it a win for the school district? Because they have the possibility, starting in in year six, of in getting more revenue than we would have gotten had it remained empty. Right now, it's assessed for one point four five million. So if they don't move and it just sits there, then whoever oh, owns it, oh, that's oh. what they're paying the taxes well, on. Uh, I'm assuming you've read this. I did. Part. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so, well, it's hopefully if they make it, but if they don't before that time period and they sell the property, and then the, the, the new property owner has a right to re get it reassessed, which most likely would drop the assessment on the property. Well, I, I guess I, I, don't, I, I don't want to assume anything. I finally figured out what's going on in Hyde Park. Yeah. <laughs> Which After is four different. changes, which which is that the same or is it different in in the, in the city of Poughkeepsie? Yeah, we're we're the oddball. Hyde Park's the oddball. Yeah, we're the oddball. The town gets full. It's 100 percent assessment. And it's 100 percent assessment. Yeah, they went through a, 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 a they paid for an assessment, went through the whole thing, and assessed. Right. right. Now, do they carry that assessment over until the five year increment is completed, at which time they reassess all the properties, or do they assess each property as it's sold? in relationship to what is the fair value prop value of that property at the time it's sold? There's a little bit different. Um, just vacancy itself, vacancy itself and um, selling price has to be figured into the, the new assessed value. So what it will effectively be doing, be freezing the assessed value that it's at right now till that sixth year, then they will 20% is added on, for, then in the second year is 40%, 60%, 80%, 100%. <laughs> so by the 10th year, we'll be at full uh, assessed value, and we'll have always collected the taxes for the full 10 years, right. just different assessed values. So uh, what I guess the answer to your question, Dan, is that the fact that, that, that somebody is, is, is va putting you know, a business in there will, uh, should affect uh, the assessed values according to their rules, as well as selling price. Okay. Do we know that their moving into that building hinges on our decision? Or does it? Well, we have the the uh, president of the, the company here. Uh, he he uh, has indicated that um, based on all the conditions that were uh, um, involved, including his sale of the property for the jail and uh, interaction with the the county exec's office and whatnot, that yes, he wants to. He's going to move. I mean, he, he wants to expand his business. He was going to expand his business next door to his current location in, uh, on property that he owns. He already has architectural plans. He was already going to build that. He needs to expand. Business, he, business he hopes, is going to um, increase in the, next, uh, in the next five years. So, I mean, just, just <clears throat> putting it out on the line. I mean, this is, you know, this is revenue lost for us made up by other taxpayers, uh, potentially. Um, it's not, not with the no. new deal. No? Not with the no. new deal. I think there's a missing well, piece. But this, I mean, if, if, we're, <coughs> if, if we're giving some reduction in year six through 10, then isn't that well, giving up yeah. revenue? Start, starting with years, let's just to, to walk it back, to start with years one through five. And, you know, um, years one through five, it, it's right now the valuation is 1.4. If he stays where he is mm -hmm. and, and that building sits there, that's what it's assessed at. So that's what we're going to get tax right. money for. So years one through five really don't make a whole bit of difference because that's what we're we getting. We still get anyway. the same. Yeah, right. We get the same right. the first five and years. Really, and then really, and quite frankly, as you go six through ten, you know, if it sat empty that long, it's not likely. I don't know if the, the value would go up at all. It, you know, it might well, stay the same if you're lucky. Um, so that six through ten, again, if it stayed empty, he doesn't make this move and it stayed empty, then, you know, that's what we're still collecting on. So now for six through ten, if the evaluation changes on twenty at, at on July 1, 2020 and goes up, let's just say it goes up a million dollars or yeah, to keep the math simple. 
um, then the abatement is only on the difference, right. not right. the whole thing. So he's, right. you know, you're still collecting on you know assessed value of 1.45 million plus 20 percent of yep. the difference, and then and then it goes up like that. I understand. Yeah. I, yeah. I, so. I understand right. the calculation. It's, it's, you know, but my point right. is, that yeah, no, I know. We're potentially giving away money right. in sometime in the future, and and with the struggle that we have. Uh, okay. Uh, you know, okay. Okay. Where, I understand question. where you're going. I mean, With, you know, without without some kind of a deal, it would be financially difficult for Mr. Burgess to move his company. That, that at, was my, at some that point, was my he original would, question. Okay. Is yes. Or not, at is, at is some point, he would say, you know, I've got the plans, I've got the property. I'd rather be in the other building, but I, you know, I need this. Okay. A bridge to get from where I am to the new, the new uh, location, and given the, that scenario, uh, I still don't see how um, this is anything other than um, a good deal for the district. I mean, the, the, the other thing, and, and you know, I, uh, I'm so usually not crazy maybe, about these things. I'm too close to it. Maybe, there's yeah. one. There, well, there's there's <clears throat> something I actually just thought of that suppose. He doesn't move, okay, and um, it, you know because he just just had no desire to. So that building's sitting empty, and we're collecting taxes on it. So after after year five, for example, let's just say nothing happens with that building. At some point, that owner's probably going to say that's enough and knock the thing down. Mm -hmm. And guess what? It's not worth one point five million dollars anymore. It's now, and then so that so we get clobbered then too. And it just that's just a fact of life, y you know. I mean, that, you know. I'm warming to this deal more because I'm starting to think and, and of I'm, scenarios that could happen that. And I'm not saying right. I'm opposed to Oh, yeah. To no, this. yeah. No, I, I just, right, I just right. want to go into right. this oh, knowing right. okay. what right. we're giving up. We're yeah. Giving no, right. I, yeah, I understand. The potential for tomorrow's dollars. Right. right. And with, with, right. with the way the only future to, is right. going. Right. But and, only if it's filled. Hmm? Only if it's filled. Right. So, and right. again, so that and goes back to the question. I'd be interested, you know, does this, if we don't, if we don't agree to this, well, look at this going forward. Look at this way. I think Fargo went out of his 1999. Yeah, it was a long time ago. Yeah, long time ago. It's been empty ever since. Yeah, some flea market moved in there. I don't think that lasted, that lasted 10 lasted minutes. Years, yeah, yeah, you know. And, so, right. Uh, the right. That, the that building would not be long for the world if somebody doesn't move <clears throat> into it. Right. I'm, I'm certain of that. I just think at some point somebody would say, I'm, I'm not paying on this. And, you know, any building, a facility like that just tends to, as you know, right. tend to fall right. apart mm -hmm. and just become, you know, and somebody would end up knocking it down and then all of a sudden you'd see the success has we're been dropped in the, the basement. Uh, half glass half empty yeah. and the glass half full uh, situation. I, I think I see it as a positive no matter which way you, you want to look at I, it. I think it's but, a great economic situation okay. for, for the, you know, perhaps the town, particularly in general. I think it has, you know, it's limited for for the district, and and my biggest concern is, you know, will we kick ourselves in in year six because of you know, I'm giving away money? About that year six, I mean, it, you're talking twenty percent. Um, well, you, yeah, our our, getting, our tax base is there's still something that's going to be picked up by the other tax payers. That's my point. Is it yeah. shifts it to the other taxpayers? Shifts it. To, you know how much? Yeah, not, not, you know. not that this matters, but I do. I am curious. So when when I guess I just when 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 and I don't know if I can ask ask this question the right way to understand it, but if 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 um, you know an assessed if, you know if they get an abatement on the assessed value, so obviously everybody else has to kind of pick up the, the slack for a little while. Is it just that? school district taxpayers in the town of Poughkeepsie, or is it the school district taxpayers in the entire, I mean, what happens to, because obviously you have a tax levy town by town, so like where, where in other words, I mean, I don't know how to, you, you know what I mean? Who, who gets, who, who's picking up the tab, so to speak? It, it's a good question, <laughs> because the assessed value is effectively taken out of the uh, Poughkeepsie piece. Right. So any change in assessed values, as we've learned, right. can have, have an effect on the entire on, right. district, right? Because right. um, it's yeah. kind of like Hyde Park's total assessed value has dropped. So the same thing will happen this year. And okay, all right. And then, and then part two of the question is with regards to to the actual dollars. 
instead of collecting it with a tax bill like we've typically yep. done for that property before he was there, it was a $1.4 million assessed value. Somebody was paying those taxes, the current owner. Instead, that assessed value comes off of the roll and uh, the owner or Taylor Manufacturing will write a check to the school district each year for the, for the 10 years. Uh, and what I'll do in the system is create a receivable and and then the revenue on the, uh, you know, to, to build our, our budget mm -hmm. will increase and offset the need to tax. Right. Right. So, okay. So, so it's not, it's not, okay. we're not shifting. I, yeah, I'm glad you put that out. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not a shift. It, right. It, okay. It's a different form of revenue. Correct. Mm -hmm. nope. Until year six. The whole time. Until it's on. Yeah, because the, the entire time this agreement's in place, the whole, they get the a bill. For the whole 10 years. Right, right. Right. My point is, but on year six, the difference, it's yeah. a shift. The difference gets shifted. The shift and the shift. They're only going to pay 20% of whatever no. their increase is. It would be the 1.4 plus the 20%. Right. Well, it I understand. starts to get better. I understand. Right, right. Mm. So, but my point is the 80% of the increase is now going to be bared, you know, what should have been bared by by the owner is going to be bared by other taxpayers now, that 80%. Right. 80% of the increase. Mm -hmm. However, it's a, it is an industrial complex that will hopefully continue to be there, yeah. which we yeah. lack. We really do need this in the town. Mm -hmm. My question is whether or not this is precedent setting for anyone else who wants to come in. No, nope. these are deal each by and deal. every individual each one is, is a, a separate to, deal. Yeah, it has to be approved by the board each okay. time. Right. The other, can just tell everybody, I'm sorry. I'm, I, the only other question I had is a uh, couple of things, because now this gets into the legalese, and uh, you know, it certainly doesn't imply that it would happen with this this company. So, so when I asked the quick, because I don't think we don't, I don't think we have one of these anywhere. No, we not don't. like we have a big tax base to begin with. So, right now, when a taxpayer a taxpayer fails to pay their property taxes. That role gets turned over to the county and the county makes up to the mm -hmm. school district. So just suppose you send the, the bill and they don't pay it. And not this one, but just anyone. Who, who, who makes up for it? Is the county on the hook for it? Does somebody say? Good question. Yeah, so I want to know. Before, you know that, and you're going to have to get that answer before third before we vote on this. Yeah, if, that's, if it's off the tax roll, the county doesn't have to. Right. I, yeah, I want to know who makes up for it if, if he fails to pay. Or does it go back on the tax? I, I don't know what happened. You know, so, you know, in other words, I want to know what, what recourse we have. Because right now, you know, a, a homeowner fails to pay his property taxes, it gets turned over to the county, and then that's mm -hmm. why the thing goes up on the auction block, because the county writes us a check and says, okay, here, sorry, you didn't make your, they didn't get your payment, here it is, and now we'll go after the homeowner. But this is a different scenario, because if it's come, comes, you know, I, ju I just want to know, and if the county, if, you know, if the, if the law operates with a pilot, oh yeah, the county still picks up the tab, then that's, that's good news, that's what I want to hear. But I want to know, before we vote on this, how that works, uh, you know. I'll clarify on this, okay. but it, th this becomes a legal contract between Taylor Manufacturing exactly. and the school right. district, yeah. right. for so which we have would have every legal. Um, right. Yeah. Well, that that's fine. And that, and it, until an organization going, goes bankrupt, and yeah, you're online with all the other creditors. Court going right. after that. If right. they were to go bankrupt and close, and continue to do business, you mean? No. No. Just go, go. The pilot goes. Away. I assume the pilot goes away. Then, yeah. but then, who owns the property? Right. Yeah. Okay. I, I see. It gets well, a little they own complicated. the property. I mean, right. So there's going to be. Then, but but yeah. But what's what the makes the pilot? Thing? What makes the pilot disappear? No, in other words, it, right you know, you know right? Does simply, it, it just goes they, back on the rolls and it acts like any other property at that point? Yeah. Normally, it would be yes. Yeah. Failure to failure to satisfy the terms there, of the contract at any contract time would, that when brought this, to attention would, would will be, yeah. void the when, contract, when it, which means it's going to go back. It, on has the it been drawn up yet? The contract for this. I would imagine once we once we have a resolution. The, nah, nah, nah. I'm not voting nah. on any resolution. I want to see the contract. There, you know, oh, you can't then, sign then it until we vote for it. But I want to see what the terms are and how this thing operates before I vote on this thing. Yeah, and I think our council should. Yeah, do that and that's well. what our it's what our council these, should be these doing. These are the terms. These are the terms. Uh, no, a lot, I asked a lot, a lot of questions of that aren't answered on this. Yeah. So. Or, or if Dan, if Dan, Dan was the one who did it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, then Dan can write a memo and describe how this thing operates and how these things are put together legally. But that's what I want to say. So can, 
Kevin, can you outline? I, I understand what you want to know. Well, it, so obviously a contract must get drawn up, if I'm assuming. And if that's the case, then I want to see what the draft's going to look like. So I want to know what the, the terms are. Or there, there's obviously some legal or there, there's obviously some... Um, some Guaranteed. Uh, yeah, there's some. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, there's 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 statutes that are put together how how a pilot operates in New York State. So I would like his analysis on that and how these things are generally how they operate, because just voting on the resolution is all well and good, and and if everything you know business is great and the check gets written every year, that's no harm no foul. But when it goes south, and I didn't understand how the thing operated, and I don't know you know no, nobody can tell me well what happens and who picks up the tab. I, I want this information before we vote on it. So, you know, we've never voted on one. We don't. I don't think we have. We don't have. We I, in anywhere in the school district. We don't have a pilot. I don't think we've ever done this before. We, and I, I think we Saint did. Francis, yeah. We did it about that hotel. St. Francis. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, that, yeah. 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 Well, that went away. I wasn't on the board. Right. So. Yeah. So what happened when it went away? Uh, Kevin, this might goes back help, on the roll. Um, clarify a little bit. The pilot can't happen without this. So the, the, thus the contract and agreement can't pursue post, you know, in other words, the, the town of Poughkeepsie, I mean, the county and the town of Poughkeepsie. And yeah, no, I, I, I understand that. But what I'm saying is that I, I have to understand how the thing works because, you know, and, and that's, I think that's a basic question. These things go on all the time. Somebody must know how they work and really that's what our our council should be providing us as an opinion on okay this is how the thing works and you know if if things go south these are the things you can expect to happen you know that's the analysis i want okay um we can see if dan can put something together and or be here mm -hmm. on thursday we do have ron hicks from the county executive's office who does have some information i don't know if the board wants to Give him a moment to, uh, do we have a public participation? Uh, no, but in this discussion, if, uh, Run if, it. if it's okay with the rest of the board. Yeah, it's um, fine. Uh, sure. Just come on up to the microphone, Ron. Thank you. And <clears throat> just state your name and. Hi, good evening, Ron Hicks, um, Strategic Planning and Development for Dutchess County. Um, I'm not responsible for the IDA, but I'm familiar with them. I've run IDAs before in the past. And uh, very good questions. And actually, uh, there is a good answer for that. And the contract that is drawn up does require um, the manufacturer or the company that's receiving the pilot uh, to perform. And there is annual compliance that's required by the state of New York and by the IDA's bylaws. And if at any time during the contract period they do not perform uh, to the terms of the agreement, that can be immediately terminated, in which case that does go, the property does go back on the tax rolls at full assessment. <laughs> and uh, yes, the county is then unfortunately responsible for covering the expense. Um, I don't know the timing between <coughs> when a taxpayer fails to pay and the county actually picks up that burden. I doubt it's immediate. It probably does take several months but the county does become responsible for that property. Um, yeah, and school, school taxes are usually collected in September, and then <coughs> by, by November, the, the, the roll's turned over to the county. Yeah. And at that point, then, you know, they, they pretty much, that's when you're getting the check from the county, right? Early January, February time frame, um, after the roll's been turned in? March 31st. Right, yeah, so, yeah. So. And the IDA is required to monitor the pilot payments. Um, there are numerous uh, <coughs> pilot agreements throughout the, the county and the state. I don't know how many of them are in Dutchess County. I did hear of one, I think, prior to my arrival or around my arrival uh, that was supposed to be for Hyde Park. That project did not get one. That, pro that project is not going forward. Um, and, and I think you had a, uh, you asked about the actual contract itself. Um, I am not, a, again, a council, and I do not run the IDA, but it's my understanding that that contract comes um, is put together based on the taxing jurisdiction's decisions um, that are made, and then it goes before the IDA for a vote. Um, I would defer to counsel of the IDA to see if your, um, your decision could be um, conditional um, upon final approval of the contract. Are we, are we a signatory to the, to the contract, or is it just the IDA? You know, it, most IDAs throughout <laughs> New York State do not require the authority uh, or the authorization of the board 
um, or any of the taxing jurisdictions. Um, in, in fact, that's one of the problems with most of the ideas around the state is that they just go ahead and they decide what you're going to get, and you have to like it. Um, in Dutchess County, um, they have adopted a policy um, where they utilize the 485B model, um, which I think a good number of the municipalities here participate in. And if the applicant of the, to the IDA deviates from the 485, it requires uh, a consensus of the taxing jurisdictions. Uh, the county has never played a role in that, in those discussions and negotiations. They leave it to the town and the school district. Um, but uh, I do believe that the IDA has the authority, um, not as a matter of uh, practice or policy, but they have the authority to move forward with whatever pilot uh, they decide. Um, uh, so I do know that there is some time constraints here. So I will be happy to check um, for you with IDA's council to see if, if you do have to make a decision on Thursday if that can be conditional upon a review of a final agreement. And I don't know, if, I know that the town of Poughkeepsie has already opined on, on one, and I do believe it has to be changed. I don't know if, if they've gone through that process yet with the town board, do you know? Okay, so this still has to go before the town board for final approval. I think it did. It did? Okay. But I'd be happy to answer that, you know, find out for you from the IDA. Um, and answer any other questions you might have. Um, right, and, and, and that's fine, but I still think we should have our legal counsel review it and provide me his, his opinion. Um, well, or, or make our decision contingent on approval of a final contract. Right. Well, uh, I mean, here's what I'm saying. I, I get what, I, what I'm saying is, you know, uh, I don't even really know how these or, or how how these things work, and you know, I ha we all had some questions here and some good questions, and and I I don't think it's unreasonable to expect that they can't be answered by Thursday, even if they are answered Thursday evening. To be honest with you, I've been able to digest the numbers. I'm okay with the numbers. I just want to know the whole picture before mm -hmm. before I agree to this. And so uh, even if Dan can come to the meeting Thursday, and I don't, you know, that's up for debate whether that could even be done publicly because, you know, quite frankly, it's not like it's a litigation thing. It's it's probably important that the public hears the same thing that we're hearing mm -hmm. as far as okay, how how, what's, how how it operates, and you know, that's what I'm kind of looking for. Right, you know? and if he's available, he right. can certainly yeah uh, come, or uh, I'm sure he'd be uh, more than happy to prepare something that I could read, uh, or. I, I know well, yeah, I, yeah, that we, uh, yeah, we can read in the public, but yeah. obviously I want my own copy to read it and digest it myself if he's prepared a written analysis. Mr. Chairman, so. if I could, I, I would actually be uh, more comfortable, if I were any of you, to get from the IDA's counsel under the chairman's signature answers to your question mm -hmm. before Thursday. Um, I don't know what, 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 what that gives you in terms of any recourse. But at least you're getting uh, mm -hmm. written correspondence from the IDA chairman and IDA council answering your questions in writing. So, well, I think that's that's a good idea. And, and, and actually, why don't we have him funnel it through Dan and have Dan review it and then provide us, you know, his, you know, his, you know, he can just say, "Yep, I read this. This makes sense. Here you go." Or it makes more questions. Right. Uh, Dan right. may have questions. Yeah. Questions. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. Um, I'll just make one other point only because I think this is a very healthy discussion and as Kevin said a lot of great questions but because this is going to be televised I think it's important to acknowledge that um, Taylor Manufacturing has been in business for a hundred and three years cool. yeah. and uh, really uh, has a, a patent pending for you know another uh, extension of their business that you know has incredible potential to grow so because uh, we do have a large uh, viewing audience I, I just yeah. thought it'd be important to point out that the Taylor manufacturing was in the city of Poughkeepsie and they're uh, p purchasing in the town of Poughkeepsie the portion that's in our school district and again it's a it's a it's a local manufacturing firm uh, that is well established in the Hudson Valley so just Oh yeah, no. Clarify I, that, yeah, yeah that's because good for if, to if know. somebody was yeah. joining in here um, without that background information, um, it's a big missing piece. Right. So, right. I think you know, and 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 I will also acknowledge both they um, and the other folks involved, and in, in Doug and Wayne for uh, 
you know, because quite frankly, the first thing that was proposed was not particularly palatable um, to me uh, and I think some other board members. And um, the fact that everybody was kind of willing to rework it and make it more palatable, um, and that's why I, I certainly, you know, wanted, you know, I. It's 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 just a serious thing we're discussing. Uh, it has serious implications both for the property owner as well as for the rest of the residents of the school district and and the school district itself. So, you know that's why I'm being you know trying to be appropriately cautious. And uh, again, I'm comfortable with the numbers. I just want to know some of the other answers to these because again, we don't have. We don't have one active and, and haven't had one. I've never voted on one before in my previous terms on the board. Um, they're, they're not that common, and it's important that people understand, you know, including the people that are actually going to vote on it, to understand what the answers to those questions are and what, what the implications are for this. Again, I'm not opposed to it in, con in, in, uh, in concept, but I think it's important that there's some education that's done so that we're comfortable voting for it. That's my view. Okay. Um, I'd kind of like to know if there's anybody who has an opposing opinion that's not comfortable with these numbers. Okay. Then uh, hopefully we get our answers. Um, thank you, Kevin, for bringing those up. They're, as we said, good, uh, good things to know. Um, I come from a trusting family, so I... I didn't think of those things, uh, yeah. Uh, but um, hopefully, we can get that settled by Thursday. Should they be settled, we should be able to. Oh yeah, I mean that's you thing. know that's that and that's why I wanted to bring. I'm, I'm glad we had the discussion tonight because I really don't want to blow this up on Thursday. Um, I, I, you know, again, you got a full day, really two full work days between now and Thursday's meeting. That I don't know why somebody can't sit down and, and okay. get these questions answered and provide either a in-person opinion or something in writing that, um, that makes, you know. Is there can, a timetable we're working on with this? I mean, is there well, I know that Taylor Manufacturing, um, they're behind in the schedule that they would have uh, preferred. Um, and that was precisely why we put it on this special board meeting to have some discussion because we thought it would be too much to put the resolution on Thursday and have the discussion on Thursday. So, happen. you know, thankfully we did. Happen. We have some right. time for questions. <clears throat> um, ideally, I think when we were first approached, um, they, the hope was to have this all completed uh, last month. So I know that they're uh, anxiously waiting our uh, vote or your vote. I just want to, <clears throat> if I could, Kevin, just clarify the follow ups. Oh, sure. Is that okay? Yep. Yeah. All right, so I'm going to be seeking the opinion of the attorney uh, on process, which would include a memo of some sort and or um, attendance at the Thursday meeting uh, to answer questions. Yeah, it might be easier if he's able to come. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Um, the, the second thing is just um, information on default, if there was a default. Yeah, just yeah, right, 103 years, I'm kind of hoping not. Okay. Hoping for another 103 from them, but, but just, you know, and I would ask that of anybody. I certainly want to imply that. I see that happening here because I don't. And then a, a little bit in, in the memo with regards to how the pilot operates and how it works, that kind of thing. Um, and then from um, the county side, uh, Mr. Hicks um, is going to work with the chair the of, council of, the IDA. of Council of the IDA to put together an opinion um, that will be funneled through our legal right. council, which I'll be able to give you. Yeah, because I want, I want our council Passing I would also it. ask that just a general review to identify any other exposure that we may not be looking at. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Is there something? Yeah. Is there something we're not identifying? We're not looking at. This well, isn't something I, we deal with on a daily basis. Let, let me point out that we did have Dan with us at the public hearing. We did have him review these numbers. We did have him re review all the pertinent information about the company, about what the IDA's proposals. Um, he's worked with us throughout. <clears throat> yeah, I, has, that, has he provided any report? Exactly. The, that's what I want. That's that's, that's kind of what I'm saying. You know, I, I'm glad that he was there every step of the way, and that's that's a, certainly a good thing. But, you know, when I think when a board is being asked to 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 vote on something like this, that information should be compiled and provided to the board as a whole by the attorney. Okay. We'll see if we can get that for Thursday. I will not be here. By the way, you're in charge Thursday. I won't be here. 
Say what? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. You're the man, Dan. Mm -hmm. Okay, are there any other questions? Uh, any other discussion? What is the yellow thing? Oh, yeah. I'm oh. curious about that. <laughs> you want to give a demo? Sure. Uh, first, uh, let me uh, introduce Mr. Burtis. Is the uh, you're the president, right, of the of Taylor Tool Company, and they uh, they manufacture specialized clamping equipment that does uh, wood gluing and things like that. Uh, I guess one of their engineers or two of their engineers had more spare time than they knew what to do with, and they invented this. And I'll let you, Mr. Burtis, explain what it is. As Mr. Heater said, our 103 years is based on building woodworking machinery of a variety of designs and styles. But one of the things that we invented recently was this Segway-like scooter, which is self-balancing and self-steering. And uh, we have recently received a patent on it, and I'll explain to you what the patent's on. But basically, inside, it's got batteries and a gyro and servo motors that drive the wheels independently. That's cool. So basically what you do, and this is one of the things that's in our future, and we're not quite sure where it's going to go and how big it's going to be, but you sit down, and the gyro, of course, balances you. So you can just sit on it and relax. You can stick your legs out, and I can carry my golf bag on it. And like a Segway, when you lean forward, it goes forward. I like it. Wow. And the thing that we applied for and received the patent on is the steering mechanism. And the seat pivots inside. And by swiveling my hips is how I drive the wheels in the middle. That's how you go around turns. So we think use is for recreation, large warehouses. Possibly medical applications. It's hard to know where it's going to go. Wow. So we're in the process of refining the design and eventually bringing it to market. Segway still has a patent that's in force that this is an infringement act. And so we have to wait two more years before we bring hmm. it to market. But we need two year years to develop it. Sure. And that's why we want the bigger building. That would be pretty cool to be built in Poughkeepsie. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And this, and thank you for coming because that that's important to us to understand. You know, um, hundred three year old business, and everybody kind of knew it was there, but doesn't really know what goes on. Right. And, and that's very educational, and hopefully that's now been conveyed to our residents who've watched on TV. And that's pretty slick. I'll send you a couple of fifteen year olds to help you out there. <laughs> well, the inventor actually is a High Park resident. And Even better. He, uh, yeah, that's great. He drives it around. Uh, housing development off of 9G that uh, is just up across the street from the road that cuts over to almost by the Dinsmore Golf Course. So that housing development. Oh, Connolly Drive. Yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. I'm off of Northbrook Cross Road. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm up and around there. That's right? cool. Testing mm -hmm. battery strength yeah. and durability. Cool. And, and again, this it's, it's a lot easier to, uh, you know, do something like this when you kind of see. You know, so thanks for the show and tell. At least for me, I think that was very important and, and means something to to people that again want to see a, a local business succeed. And um, you know, and I think it'll be important to our voters to see that too. When you know, when we decide on this, that they'll understand, you know, some of our thought process behind the dis, uh, deciding it. So that's pretty cool. Okay. Thank you very much. Thanks. See you on Thursday. I hope. <laughs> Meeting on Thursday is at Haviland, right? Yeah. It is. Right. It is. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know if you heard that, um, Mike. The yeah. meet. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Right. Night. Night. I hope you don't mind if you want to bring that again, because <laughs> there'll be a lot more people in the audience. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. <laughs> That's cool. Well, we'll bring some of the right. and we'll have a match. Yeah. <laughs> well, I guess nothing worthwhile comes easily. But yep. it, it will. It can. Oh, yeah. It can happen. <clears throat> okay. Moving on. We have a presentation on the Dutchess County Board of Cooperative Services, formerly known as BOCES, and their proposed budget. Or informally, yes. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> <clears throat> Thank you, Doug. So 
tonight uh, is our annual BOCES vote, and uh, the Board of Education in each um, um, district throughout Dutchess County uh, will be voting on two items each year, and those two items are the general administrative costs of the BOCES budget, as well as the retiree health expense. Um, for tonight's vote, the increases in, in these lines are 2.19%. After a full review of where we are with the BOCES budget right now, the increase to, to, to the overall BOCES budget is 3.71%. The remainder, after the administrative expenses are, are, are concerned, are all coaster based and that's based on participation and we pay by, by what we participate in. Uh, this here is the uh, full administrative budget, which we weren't given before in the past and it was requested, so I did add that. Um, and that is their full administrative budget. And the portion, again, that we're really looking at this evening is the expense for administrative and retirees' health. And that's 350358 for 1415 as you can see, um, and that's $7,512 more than it was in 13-14, and our increase, as I mentioned to begin with, is 2.19%. It's very simple, um, as there's very few things to vote on. Um, but again, the board's only voting on <coughs> these two codes. <clears throat> I always call BOCES to, to find out what things are, are causing increases in their budget, just like we do uh, for our own general fund budget. Uh, for administrative, there's normal increases in administrative costs, for things like salaries and benefits, uh, some of the similar things that we deal with. And uh, they've also uh, been making savings to their administrative costs by reductions made in their physical space and the FTEs, similar to what most school districts and BOCES are doing throughout New York State. With regards to retirees' health expense, it is a, a more of a fixed cost, <clears throat> and that's bolstered due to health insurance increases that we all face. Um, and an increase in the number of retirees certainly um, makes more expense in that line. Um, and it was nice to see that BOCES had utilized some of the accrued funds, similar to a fund balance, but different for BOCES, to lower the retiree health costs. So they are doing proactive things to, to see that uh, their administrative expenses are under, um, you know, being looked at and kept well. Uh, the BOCES budget, each component district pays a portion of the administrative expenses based on the WADA and the wealth indexes and a, a formula. Um, for all their BOCES expenses, the district pays a portion, as I mentioned, to the closer participation, um, but we don't vote on the, the closer participation, rather, rather we sign up. Uh, that's the end of the show, and I'll entertain any questions. What's up first, the budget vote? So moved. Mm. Second. Any discussion? What's that? To approve, yeah. I moved to approve, sorry. And that second was to approve. Any discussion? All those in favor? Approve. Now, go to 6.2, vote on BOCES board members. Well, at least we have a choice this year. Hmm? So at least we have a choice. <laughs> we do have a choice. Um, I believe Thomas Hurley and Robert Rubin are incumbents. No, real. I think and Rubin was the one we nominated. Oh, Rubin's He's the, from the new one. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. Yep. 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 The first two are incumbents. <clears throat> right. uh, Rubin's right. the last. Now, yep. uh, something I should have done and I didn't. Can, I don't know if somebody can look it up on the on the internet. What I what I want just just because I I mean <laughs> we'll have to talk about this, but. I, I do know Mr. Rubin is a current member, I think, of the Wappinger School Board. I think he is. So that's what I want to verify. I want, first, I want to know, are they all serving on a board other than BOCES? Uh, Hurley is on Millbrook. Uh, yeah, and it has I been. But is he, been still, and is he still on Millbrook's yeah. board? Okay. Yeah. I don't know real. Beacon, but I don't know if he's on the Beacon board. I know he's been on the Beacon board, but I don't know if he currently is. So that's what I wanted to find out. All right. And same with Ruby. We can do that. Yeah. We can do that. Right and now. the only re and you know, because uh, you know, obviously we're picking two of the three. We don't really know any of them. We'll have to probably talk about it a little bit. But one of the things that, you know, it's a lot to be on a board. I can't imagine what it's like to be on a board and a BOCES board. So you know, I guess if if I had a choice, if one of them is not currently serving on a board, I tend to lean there, not knowing anything about them. Um, 
you know. We had emails. Yeah, and we I can't had remember. Emails. Um, it might be. They were really specific. You know, I don't. Yeah, you know, if somebody can pull up the you know, email. Because if I were running, I'd say I was on the Hyde Park board for X number of years. Oh. And if I didn't say I'm not on it now, it may not be so obvious. So that's what I wasn't sure about when I read the emails. All right, Real is not on, not on the Beacon Board of Education. Okay, all right, that's good to know. And Hurley is currently on Millbrook? He's been on for like 20 years. Yeah, Double check no, Ruben. I think he is on Wappingers currently, but I just wanted to. Hang on. I think I would have looked at this before, but I literally wasn't thinking about it until just now. <laughs> uh, Robert Ruman is a member of the He's currently Wappingers. member of Wappingers. Current, yes. Okay. They have two vacant seats, by the way. Yeah, I see that, and they got what eleven people running or something. Or five, right, yeah. They have eleven people running, I think. Yep. Right. <clears throat> Wappingers. All right. They have eleven candidates. That's crazy. All right. So we know. Two vacancies oh, plus whoever's up. If, we don't know if Ruben's term yeah, is up. Do we know up. where his term is? Does it, does it say when his term expires? I don't know if they list it with their board list, you know, like say term, like we do. We know with the, everyone, the current members and when your term expires. Okay, any other information that anybody no, wants me to look up? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I left the iPad in the car because they said I was a short agenda. I don't need the agenda in front of me. I managed to get rid of my board doc there. <clears throat> uh, so, just, and I'm just making general comments because I, you know, while in to fill the time here. Mr. Real is not currently a board member. He has served in Beacon. He's currently a BOCES board member. And he's had experience as a business official in school districts, right? If I remember his email correctly. So that's yes. kind of the general thought on him. I don't know if anybody else has anything to say about the others. Um, I only know one of them, so. <laughs> yeah, well, go ahead. I mean, yeah, I mean, that's right. <laughs> so, um, we just vote yay or no on each of the three? Is that the uh, you kind of could kind of vote. We kind of have to decide which two we're voting for, and then I think you just well, make the yeah, motion. I know, but right. I know. How, how do you want to do that? <clears throat> does anyone personally know, you know? Does anyone professionally or personally know any of the three candidates? I've I've met Hurley, and uh, uh, he used to come to the uh, school board association. Uh, okay. Meeting, so I that's, remember that's my limited years ago. Limited I, I met him years ago too. Uh, yeah, he's yeah. I think he's a, you know. However, the they the, the top two are, are incumbents. At least right. they know what the job is, right? And what they're getting into. Um, well, I'm inclined to vote for real. Uh, yeah, I kind of was too, only because he's not currently a school board member, so we know he's got at least enough time um, to, you know, and his other experience. And then now I, I think it's a question of whether or not we think a change is in order. Yeah. Well, you know, here's the other thing too. If we vote for real, you know, you start thinking, okay, although it looks like, you know, Mr. Rubin lives in the town of Poughkeepsie. But still, you think, you know, Southern Duchess with Wappingers and Beacon, which Real lives in. And then you say, well, if you vote for Hurley, that's more center of the county. It represents a different area. I mean, that's kind of really what you're, you know, mm -hmm. for lack of anything else. I mean, unless somebody's a, a total lunatic, and I don't think that's the case with these three guys, that it's really a toss-up, and it's just kind of what makes sense, you know? Well, I'll put you on the spot and put up two names, and then we'll vote on it and see if we want to pr promote those. It sounds really lazy, um, but I would probably nominate or uh, move uh, Mr. Hurley and Mr. Real, just based on <laughs> I talked myself into it just now. Okay. Is there a second for that motion? Mm -hmm. I'll second that one. <clears throat> Any discussion? All those in favor? I'm, I'm in favor of that one. So, all right. So we'll put forth those two names. 
<laughs> Good thing I look for it. That's right. Okay, just a reminder that there is a, a full board meeting on Thursday, April 24th, 7 o'clock at the Havel Middle School in the auditorium. And now, may I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Thank you very much. <laughs>